Money does not have limits. Don't let the numbers limit your imagination. Welcome to Material Luxic. Have you ever wondered what the world would have been like without Bitcoin? Of course, some of you would say it would have been completely the same, but others still argue that Bitcoin changed the structure of what money and finance are all about. And that's all thanks to Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin. So who is this person? And why did he start the crypto revolution? Stay with us to find out. Satoshi Nakamoto is a name related to the creator of Bitcoin to stay anonymous. Even though Satoshi Nakamoto is often used as a synonym for the person who created Bitcoin, no one has ever been able to prove that they are the same person, especially when all the links that lead to the creator are non-existent. So who is this person? And why did he create this cryptocurrency? Rightfully so, many people think that it is a fake name for a person or group of people with a different name who use it to hide their identities. Why would he do that, you ask? That's because the Bitcoin project was extremely risky back when it first started, so it would be expected to bring so much backlash with it. But who is Satoshi Nakamoto? What are their motives? Why does he insist on staying anonymous? Satoshi Nakamoto is a fake name for a person who wrote the original Bitcoin white paper and is thought to have created Bitcoin, as we explained earlier on. Many people have claimed to be Satoshi Nakamoto or were thought to be him, but no one has ever been able to confirm or find out who he is. And even after finding some evidence, there would always be some missing pieces. The first one being the Bitcoin's white paper, which obviously would be the most important proof of who might be the real Satoshi Nakamoto. And as far as this video goes, there are no documents that we are aware of detailing who might this person be or who he is working with. Satoshi Nakamoto seemed to be involved with Bitcoin in the early days when he worked on the first version of the software in 2007. One email was used to send and receive messages to and from Nakamoto because there were no personal or background details. It was impossible to figure out who the person was. With that being said, Satoshi, being the founder of Bitcoin, will have massive wealth. But how much? Well, at the current price of Bitcoin, Satoshi would be worth more than a billion dollars because it is said that he holds almost 1 million BTC. And that also depends entirely on the Bitcoin's price. In 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto wrote a paper that made cryptocurrency known to a much wider audience. This started the rise in the popularity of cryptocurrency. The paper Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, talked about how a peer-to-peer -peer network could be used to stop people from spending the same amount of money twice. At the time, the idea of digital currency was not new, and there have been more than a few attempts to make one. But Bitcoin solved an important problem. A digital currency or token could be used more than once, since a physical bill or coin can only be in one place at a time. This is not possible with physical currencies. Since digital currencies doesn't exist in the real world, using it in a transaction doesn't always take it away from the person who owns it. Because of this, it could be spent twice, which is why it is called the double spend problem. In the past, the only way to stop people from spending the same digital currency twice was to use trusted third parties to check if a digital currency had already been spent by its owner. Most of the time, third parties like banks could handle transactions well without adding a lot of risks. Satoshi Nakamoto may not be a real person. The name could be a fake name for the person or people who made Bitcoin if he wants to stay anonymous. But this trust-based model still adds cost and increases the risk of fraud because in the past, trusted third parties haven't lived up to the trust that was put in them. It's not always the institutions that offer third-party validation services that can't be trusted. It's more likely to be the people who are involved in the transactions. So the human factor needs to be taken out completely. At the moment, the only way to keep people out of finances is through cryptography and automated group consensus mechanisms. Nakamoto suggested using ledgers, a network, Merkle roots and trees, timestamps, incentives, cryptography, and a consensus mechanism to make transactions happen without a central point of control. In a blockchain, timestamps are added to information about transactions, and cryptography is used to keep the information secret. The data that has been encrypted can't be changed, but it must be checked. The network must check that the transactions are real using a method called proof of work that is based on a majority vote. Because the record of transactions is spread across many nodes in the system, it is hard, if not impossible, for a bad actor to gain enough control of the system to change the ledger in their favor. 
Small-scale attacks are less likely to happen because it takes a lot of computing power to change the records in a blockchain. Hackers would need a network that could validate and create blocks faster than the current network, and then add the new blockchain to the main network at the right time to override it. They would also have to use several other attacks on the blockchain at the same time. By looking at Bitcoin's blockchain, it's been pretty easy to figure out which addresses are probably Satoshi Nakamoto's. Sergio Damian Lerner, the chief scientist at RSK Labs, did a chain analysis and found that Satoshi has over 1 million Bitcoin. These addresses go way back to 2008 when Bitcoin first started. The person who made Bitcoin probably had no other choice but to stay anonymous. If the creators' names were known, the Bitcoin publicity would likely turn their lives upside down. It's also likely that criminals would go after them, so it might be best for them to stay anonymous. No one knows who Nakamoto is, but the 1 million bitcoins that are thought to be under his control are worth a lot. Since the most bitcoins that can be made is 21 million, Nakamoto's 5% share of the total number of bitcoins gives him a lot of market power. Many people have been suggested as the real Satoshi Nakamoto, but none of them have been proven to be him. In March 2014, Leah McGrath Goodman wrote in Newsweek that Dorian Nakamoto, a professor and engineer in California, was the person who came up with the idea for Bitcoin. McGrath's report says, The trail followed by Newsweek led to a 64-year-old Japanese-American man whose name is Satoshi Nakamoto. However, further investigations showed that this Nakamoto was not the real one. Hal Finney was involved in the Bitcoin community before and after it started and he was the first person to get paid with Bitcoin. He also lived a few blocks away from Dorian Nakamoto, who some people think may have been the inspiration for a fake name Finney made up. Nick Sabo was one of the first cyberpunks and he knew a lot of people in that group. In 2005, he wrote a blog post about his idea for a digital currency called BitGold that wouldn't depend on the trust of third parties. Sabo has also been taken out of the running. Craig Wright is one of the more interesting people who have been put forward as Satoshi Nakamoto. Dr. Wright, an Australian professor and businessman, have said more than once that he is Satoshi. He's also been involved in lawsuits over who owns the identity. In December 2021, a jury ruled against Wright in a civil case brought by the estate of the late David Clayman, who had worked with Wright before he died. Clayman's estate said that Wright and Clayman created Bitcoin together and that Clayman should get half of Wright's 1.1 million BTC stash because of this. In 2010, Nakamoto stopped being involved with Bitcoin. The last time anyone talked to Nakamoto, he or she sent an email to another crypto developer saying that they had moved on to other things. People have made a lot of guesses about who Nakamoto is because they can't put a face to the name. This is especially true now that cryptocurrencies are becoming more common popular, and well-known. But $100 million was given to Clayman's estate which shows that the jury and court thought Wright and Clayman worked on the project together in some way. Also in 2021, a court in the United Kingdom told Bitcoin.org to take down the Bitcoin white paper because it was violating Wright's copyright. This meant that the court thought Wright had some kind of intellectual property right to the paper. It is said that Nakamoto has a million Bitcoins. The total value will depend on how the market is doing and how much Bitcoin is worth. For example, if the market price of Bitcoin is $29,000, then the total value is $29 billion. No one knows if Nakamoto is a single person or a group of people hiding behind a fake name. But it is safe to say that real people came up with the idea for Bitcoin. Since Satoshi chose to remain anonymous, it's hard to tell if the person or group that used the name went away or not. People want to know who might be behind the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto, because he or she was a key figure in the development of cryptocurrency. Many things in modern life have changed because of what this person or group of people thought. There is a chance that Bitcoin won't exist in the future. But Nakamoto's blockchain technology and the progress made with it are likely to be around for a long time. So now that you know the story of Satoshi Nakamoto and his mysterious persona, do you think he made up this persona to hide his true motives? Or just to make the Bitcoin story more exciting? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel.